We've got about 45 minutes to go until the closing bell. You're still looking at gains across the board. Another record-setting day on Wall Street. Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ all moving to the upside. You can see the Dow up just around 100 points. S&P up just around a tenth of a percent. The NASDAQ up about a quarter of a percent. In terms of the leadership that we're seeing within the Dow today, Caterpillar, United Health, Visa, Intel, and Merck are the top five performers. Another group of stocks getting a boost today are the EV stocks. Now, this move to the upside is coming on some of the excitement after Congress passed a trillion dollar infrastructure package late Friday night. Now, we know that this infrastructure package includes billion dollar, billions of dollars of spending for the EV industry. So let's talk about a key component of EV adoption, and that is lithium. It's necessary for the use of EV, or it's necessary uh, for the production, I should say, of EV batteries. So let's talk about how to boost production of this, the importance of it. And for that, we want to bring in John Evans. He's Lithium America's CEO and president. And John, it's good to see you again. We know that this is a very aggressive EV uptake that the Biden administration has laid out. We've heard it from a number of, not only here in the U.S., but a number of countries around the world. Just give us a sense of what the supply and demand picture looks like for lithium right now. Uh, things are, are really short uh, in the industry overall. You can see that with spot pricing, uh, which has come up and actually now contract pricing has come up behind it. You know, over the last year, you know, pricing has gone from around $8,000 a ton to today it's, it's well over $20,000 a ton and the market's really tight. And that's been followed on by all these announcements uh, by OEMs to build uh, battery capacity in, in the U.S. and in Europe and, and other places. So the industry is really t uh, setting itself up for uh, structural shortness over the next couple of years. John, your shares are up uh, pretty strong today, up over 8 percent. And uh, to help us understand where we are in the production of lithium, the majority of this is coming out of South America, but there are efforts. I mean, there how many mines are now up and running in the United States? At one point, I guess it was just one mine out of Nevada, but is that yeah. increasing? There's only one right now, and that mine's been in operation since the early 60s. So there's uh, a couple of projects, uh, ours being the, the most advanced and biggest, but there's a few others as well. They're all going to be needed uh, as our country really goes from today to 2030. It's going to be a 10x increase in the amount of lithium that's needed just to support the transportation industry. So it's become uh, it's a critical link in the supply chain and, and certainly in the U.S. It's one that we need to react on and, and, uh, and ensure that we have the, the ingredients here to, to participate in the market. John, give us your sense just of the infrastructure bill that was passed. Billions of dollars of that has been allocated or will be allocated to the EV industry. From someone that's within the industry, obviously playing a very, very important part in the adoption of EVs going forward, is this enough funding in your in your view? I think it's great. I really applaud the administration uh, and uh, both parties for for supporting this. Uh, there's, there's a lot of key elements in it that support not only processing and manufacturing, but also charging stations. Of course, there's tax benefits for uh, purchasing electric vehicles. It sort of hits the entire waterfront. Uh, there's a lot of excitement around it. Uh, is it enough? Probably not. But I think what it does do is it helps bring private capital off the sidelines and, and that there's a real commitment now by by our government uh, behind this. Uh, we're committed to it. And, and with that, I think you know, some investors won't be so spooked. And really what you need is private capital to come in and, and finish the equation, which I think that's going to happen now. And I, I think you're starting to see that with retail and institutional shareholders buying uh, into companies like our own and, and others in the supply chain. And I think you'll see that closely followed by uh, hard investments in, in some of these segments of the supply chain by uh, by private capital. Can you share with us uh, the estimates, if they exist, for the amount of lithium that remains untapped and how is is there a peak lithium the way we talk about peak oil that can be easily extracted going forward as demand is just going to keep increasing? Well, lithium is not rare, so there's there's quite a bit in the U.S. and Canada, uh, and that's that's been untapped obviously with only one mine that's operating. We're not going to run out of lithium. Uh, I, I don't think we're at peak lithium at all. I think uh, it's going to be hard to when to call that, but it's certainly going to be the decade or or next 20 years will be lithium. I think the interesting thing with lithium, though, is that you can start to close the supply chain, unlike oil and gas, which which aren't recyclable. Uh, you know, there's uh, companies like Redwood and, and others that are putting re recycling in now. And batteries, uh, once we have enough batteries, which over the next 10 years, we'll start building them out and they start uh, coming due to be recycled, uh, you can close the loop. And actually a portion of the lithium demand 
and it'll continue to grow over the years, uh, can be satisfied with recycling. So I think that's often lost in discussions that we're going to keep digging uh, or uh, building mines and building processing facilities. Uh, I think that'll treble uh, 20 years from now as uh, as recycling becomes a uh, more meaningful. Uh, 15%, maybe 20% of the lithium demand can be satisfied with recycling. Yeah, John, we've seen a number of the large automakers uh, place an emphasis on this and real focus on this. But what are you targeting? What is your what is Lithium America's targeting just in terms of production capacity? And how quickly do you think or are you expecting to be able to scale that production? Well, in South America, we have an asset coming online next year, and that the capacity of that's about 40,000 tons, which sounds like a lot on an annualized basis, but it's it's less than 10% of the annual demand as we sit today. And by 2025, it's even less than that. It'll be about 4%. Uh, in the U.S., uh, the project at Thacker Pass, the initial capacity is going to be about 40,000 tons uh, for the U.S. market uh, with the ability to raise up to 80,000 tons. Again, sounds like big numbers, but the U.S., by by 2030, we'll be consuming over 350,000 tons of lithium just in our own domestic market. So there's going to be more projects that are needed, uh, and there'll be different technologies uh, for different resources. But uh, it's certainly something that the industry needs to respond now because it takes a long time to put these into service. It can take decades.